So astronomers have possibly detected the biosignatures of life on this planet K218b, but I haven't heard that many people talk about the core equation behind it, which is not the Drake equation, but the Seeger equation. So let's talk about that today. Okay, so we have, we know we're in this beautiful place where you have K218b, which is this cool planet that is um, orbiting as an, a planet does. You can see here it's like 0.2 astronomical units away from its star. And what that tells you is this kind of a pixelated image, but you can see, you know, we're one astronomical unit away from the sun and it's, you know, 0.2 astronomical units away from its star. And I think that the, uh, but if you're closer and the star's smaller, then that's okay. So that's, and that's why the watts per meter squared is roughly similar for both. And so that's why it's exciting. It's like, oh, it might be this Haitian, 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 Haitian world. <laughs> it's not from Haiti, but it's a world that has a hydrogen atmosphere and a possible, and a possible liquid ocean. And so this, the key thing that was very exciting for everybody is that we saw uh, when the planets do transits in front of their star, we get to see certain light that comes from the star. And normally you expect the light to look a certain way, but when the planet goes in front of it, some of the atmosphere blocks a percentage of the light. You can see amount of light blocked here on the y-axis. And so what this means is for, and you can see on this graph, the dimethyl sulfide, which is traditionally on Earth, produced by plankton, um, you can see that it blocks a little bit of the light. And so that is surprising for us. We're like, whoa, usually if uh, something is, there's this add gas that's blocking the light, and that gas is produced primarily by life. So that is what we call a biosignature. And so that's kind of the um, idea is that we... Are excited by this planet because it might have life producing dimethyl sulfide and i think that's beautiful but i think the thing that i want to add today is you know if we think about these two equations you know there's the uh i think a lot of people know the drake equation but there's uh, a second equation which is the seeger equation so let's let's talk about each of those so the drake equation as um i'll draw it here is our good friend Drake in the 1950s, maybe, as we were starting to think about life on other planets, Drake was like, okay, so this is the Drake equation. And Drake, the Drake equation is, it's about intelligent life. It's about finding intelligent life in our galaxy. And so there's about 100 billion stars in our galaxy. Of those 100 billion stars, we think maybe, maybe 10%, maybe 100 billion, so there's 100 billion stars, each of which has you know, um, about, let's call it a one planet going around it. And um, depending on how you count the, um, and so we think that about maybe let's call it 10% of them might have life. Uh, and then if of those 10% that might have life, that might have a planet like earth in its habitable zone, maybe of those 10% of stars, maybe 10, maybe 10% 10 of them actually produce life. So this is, I think a rough, equation, and if you ask O3 or something like that to um, give a rough estimate for the Drake equation in our galaxy, you get about 10 billion or, um, s planets that have life on them. You know, of all the stars, about 1% of those stars have a planet with life. So I think that's, so that's 1%. Then you can say, well, what percentage of those stars with life actually produce intelligence? Intelligent civilization. Intelligent civilization. And... I think that uh, you can kind of look at Earth for this, which is that Earth, there's a brilliant, you know, Cool Worlds has a great uh, visual on this, where if you look at uh, from the start of life, you know, uh, start Earth about 4 billion years ago through now, it, life started so soon. It started almost immediately after Earth was created. And so it's kind of easy pr to produce life, uh, but intelligence only came at the very very end over here you know we only got humans uh, homo sapiens um homo sapiens much 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 later and so we think it's a lot harder probably to produce intelligence to produce an intelligent civilization than it is to produce life and so maybe you can kind of say of these billion planets that produce life let's call it one in a million maybe you know produce uh intelligent civilization so one in a million so one in one million produce um, intelligent civilization, and that would be about a thousand. 
about a thousand intelligent civilizations. So this is roughly how you get to do some napkin math to say, okay, in the Milky Way galaxy, in just our galaxy, in the, you know, one galaxy, um, and remember there's a hundred billion galaxies, so this is just in our galaxy, but in, in our galaxy, but there's about a thousand intelligent civilizations. And you can actually see if you were to look back over here and, you know, what is the chance that we are alone in the universe? This is a thing that has slightly different numbers and number of new stars born and blah, blah, blah. Uh, I don't actually like it as much, but you can calculate it. It says, yeah, there's about 756 communicating civilizations in the galaxy. So that is the Drake equation. But if you go over here and you go to Seeger equation, that's actually the one that we want to talk about today. And because the Seeger equation, if we think back to our beautiful K218b, that star is, uh, we're not looking for intelligent life. We're looking for just life, just a biosignature. And so this Seeger equation came around much later. Uh, 2013 is when um, the woman scientist, uh, uh, Seeger created it. You can see here, if we look back to um, this thing, you can say, okay, well, let's look at, you know, the amount of, this is a map of the Milky Way. And so this is, you know, of those, the Drake equation was about how many intelligent civilizations in our galaxy. And so here's our whole galaxy, 100,000 light years, and maybe, you know, a thousand intelligent civilizations. But you can see the reach of Earth's radio signals is just 200 light years. It's just this little yellow or this little green circle here. Or for the last, you know, uh, 200 years, we've been sending out um, radio signals and those radio signals have been moving for 200. They move at the speed of light. And so they're, they're 200 light years away from us. And that's very small. It's a very small piece of this bigger pile. And so you can think, oh, well, in that 200 light years, the Seeger equation says, well, let's actually use those telescopes to look 100 light years away, to look 200 light years away and see if we can detect biosignatures there. And so the Seeger equation, if the Drake equation looks at the whole Milky Way, the Seeger equation looks at just these 200 light years around us. And you can kind of see there's a, some beautiful ways to look at this. This is a map um, of the stars that are 100,000, or sorry, 100 light years away. There's around, you know, around 200 light years away from us, there's about 100,000 stars. Uh, and so you can see that here. Here's this beautiful image of, you know, there's the, the sun, which is um, right here. And then you can kind of zoom out and you can see there's Earth and Venus and Mars. And you can kind of keep on zooming out. And eventually, you know, that's one AU, 10 AUs away, the astronomical units. And eventually you get one light year away. So this is at the very edge of where our sun is. And then you can start to see, ah, there's Proxima and Alpha Centauri about four light years away. So that's the kind of the closest star to us. And remember, the Voyager is only 50 AUs away. So the Voyager is so, so, so close. And then Alpha Centauri is very, very far away. So Alpha Centauri is the closest star, about four light years away. And if you keep on zooming out, these are some of the stars that are around a hundred thousand or sorry 100 to 200 light years away and so and then here's obviously us in the big old milky way but so these these close stars are really what we're talking about for biosignatures and so that's what k218b is is these these biosignatures and you can see here you know if you look at the seeger equation here this 100,000 is the number of observable red dwarf stars so that is if we go back to um our good friend over here we say okay let's now look at the, let's let's try to do this thing the same thing but for the Seeger equation and so let's do Seeger and we have we start Seeger with a hundred thousand um, stars there's a hundred thousand stars which are around 200 in like in you know 200 light years away from us so we have these hundred thousand stars and there are some exoplanet candidates in there and you can kind of do the same math as before where you say, okay, of those 100,000 stars, maybe uh, maybe 1% of them have life, you know, just kind, of like, just kind of like from before where you say, okay, 1% have life, um, have life. And so you get around 1,000 uh, planets with life that are near to us. So of those 1,000 with life, not all of them produce biosignatures. Um, kind of seeable biosignatures. So maybe a hundred produce the correct biosignatures, and then 
about 10 of them ish are able to be viewed have the correct uh, clouds and the correct kind of star to make it so that we can actually see them and so um, this is seeable or observable uh, let's call this ob observable biosignatures and so that's the number so there's there's roughly 10 you know if, if above we think there's about a thousand intelligent civilizations in our galaxy who knows which ones we will actually be able to see the radio signals signals of uh, the Seeger and that's what the Drake equation says the Seeger equation says there's a hundred thousand stars that are around 200 light years away from us maybe a thousand of them will actually produce life but only about 10 of them um, might be an observable star or sorry a uh, 10 of them might produce observable biosignatures and so that's exciting and so that's really what you know if we come back to k12 18b uh, by the way let's just let's just check our math here let's just give a today's optimistic how many do they think 750 planets with detectable life yeah that's ish what we were saying you know <laughs> emphasis on ish i was saying a, a, a thousand with life maybe 10 of which will be actually be observed so um and you can ask oh three about this and it gives roughly this amount if we come back to this and we think what's actually important with k218 b i mean there's lots of important things about it but i think the key thing is that it might be it just might be one of these 10 observable planets that we're actually finding um, biosignatures of and so whether it's uh this one or whether it's a future one you know something like o3 says by 2030 we're going to find there's a 95 percent chance that we see observable biosignatures on a planet whether it's k2 18b or something else so hope this is helpful and yeah just wanted to do a more timely video about uh exciting astronomy in the world thanks